In this video, I'm going to show you how I sew buttonholes, uh, varying levels of complexity. I'm going to start off with real simple, basic stuff and then work up from there. Of course, every buttonhole needs a foundation, so let's start there. My name is Cornelius Quiring, and at Corn, keep it moving. In order to make a nice buttonhole, the fabric needs structure, and to do that, we use some fusible interfacing. See how nice and rigid it is? Which essentially has some glue on the back side, and then I simply press it down, making sure the glue is facing down, of course, and I press it onto the back of wherever I want to make my buttonhole. There we go. I also draw myself a guide in the form of an uppercase I. Measure what distance I want it to be. All right, top, bottom, and it's gonna run up and down. I start off on one side. I'm just gonna use a basic straight stitch. I go up until I meet my cross line. With the needle down, I lift up and turn 90 degrees. I'm gonna go across one stitch only, up and turn again, back down, and just go around a few times doing that same thing. We're gonna go backwards a couple times to close it up. Snip off the loose threads. Pretty straightforward, I think. Now we gotta open up the hole in the middle. I like to put a pin here as a stopper to prevent myself from accidentally cutting the one side. And then using a knife, scissors, or even seam ripper, just go ahead and open that up in the middle. Clean up any loose threads. And that is the most basic of buttonholes. All right, moving on. This next one is sort of beginner 1B. It's basically the same technique, but with a zigzag stitch. I'm gonna start on one of the crossbars of my eye that I drew out. I've gone to a zigzag stitch and I've done it nice and tight. I go across a handful of stitches. I make sure the needle is down and I land on the left side. Lift up the presser foot, turn it around, and then I'm gonna work my way down. And what that's gonna do is make sure that I go over top of the stitches I just did. Again, I want the needle to land on the left side, down, I lift up, I turn. And again, that means I'm gonna go over top of my stitches. I go over a handful. Land on the left, across, Work my way down. And then finally, one last time, lift up, turn, and go over top of those stitches that I did at the very beginning to close it up. Let's cut that puppy open. There we go. That's a buttonhole. For what it's worth, I Sewed a few janky ones before I got to this one. This one's a bit lumpy. Got the spacing wrong here. Takes practice. For this one, all the zigzag stitches are gonna go side to side and face in one direction. Uh, but mine comes pre-set with all the different bits for doing a zigzag all in one direction, up and down. 
If not, it's just a case of manually adjusting your stitch width and whether it's in the center, left or right. And the reverse button. So I'm gonna start at the very top crossbar. I'm gonna do the thin zigzags on the left hand side first. Then with the needle up, I move to doing the wide zigzag at the bottom. Do a handful of those. Move over to the thin zigzag on the right hand side. Once again, with the needle up, I switch back to the wide one. And the key here is to go over top of the two thin lines of zigzags to make sure they're nicely enclosed and they won't come undone. There we go. That's the technique you're gonna see most commonly on quote unquote professionally sewn garments. Now there is a pressure foot we can buy specifically for buttonholes. This bit moves up and down it has this rubber underneath to hold the fabric down. And depending on which one you get, it even comes with a little pointer here so you can measure exactly how big you're making your buttonholes without having to mark it. All right, let's see this puppy in action. The technique that we're gonna use is exactly the same as the last one. I start off with the thin zigzags on the left-hand side. With the needle up, I switch to the wide one at the bottom, switch over to the thin zigzags on the right hand side. With the needle up, back to the wide ones at the top, covering both sides once more. That's it right there. I find it's just a little bit tidier than without the presser foot. Notice that there's a little nib on the back and fork looking like thing on the front. There is proper cording for this kind of stuff. I'm just going to use a couple layers of thread and I loop it on the back and then pinch it in the fork in the front here, like that. Loop in the back, pinched in the front. I like to give it a little twirl just so it becomes a singular unit. I'm going to start with the left hand side first, the thin zigzag stitches. And I'm going to do a couple by hand just to make sure that I get around the thread or cording nicely. When the cord does slip around, I use the tip of my scissors just to push it back into place. Move forward. Notice how I'm holding the thread slash cording nice and taut. I find that helps to prevent myself from accidentally sewing into it. Then I do a couple thin zigzag stitches on the right hand side by hand again, just to make sure that I hold the cord or thread in the right place. At which point I can then do the thick zigzag at the bottom and then back to the thin zigzag on the right hand side. Finally I do the thick zigzag at the top. Should be able to pull this thread nice and tight now. Snip off the excess. And that is a slightly raised buttonhole. Should point out that I did do Many a demo of this one as well, just to get it right. I too am by no means an absolute master of the craft. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, ah, these buttonholes aren't as clean as I would like them to be. Well, <laughs> you've got a lot in common with critical corn, uh, but I do have a solution and it comes in the form of this machine that exclusively sews buttonholes. And it can be yours for the low, low cost of $5,000. If that's not your jam, the other solution is to invest your time and learn how to hand sew. Now, if you really 
want to become a master of the craft, I suggest learning how to do a uh, Milanese buttonhole. Milan Ezi. I think that's how it's said. Uh, it's a keyhole buttonhole. Also has cording in it, and it's done by hand, and <laughs> I cannot claim this as my own. It's done by another YouTuber who goes by the name of Hugo Havey. Uh, I've linked the video below. Highly recommend you check it out, and uh, mm, one day I too. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm never going to do that, but it's very cool. I hope that helped illuminate buttonholes for you. Uh, if you want to get to know a little bit more of what I do, I've got... All these links here to various different endeavors of mine. Thank you to everyone who supports me on the Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. You too could be one of those people. You could even be one of these top tier supporters. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. I don't know, leave a comment of some sort. The algorithm likes it when there's engagement. Actually, it likes watch time mostly, so if you've made it here, you've already done your job. But hey, me and you can chat. How about that? Or watch this video next. Yeah, I guess I got to hold here for a second, eh? Ah, by now you've clicked it, or maybe you haven't. <laughs>